Fernando Fernandez for Fern TV, and we are here at the National Film Board of Canada, and we uh, we're going to be interviewing uh, uh, Claire Blanchett and Heather O'Neill out of the movie *The End of Picky*, and it'll be showing here at the Toronto International Film Festival, and we're going to discuss a little bit about this film. And can you tell us, um, um, did you see this film being actually uh, being adapted from your story to a, to an actual film, and then of course an animation film? Did you ever think of that? No, it was not in my mind when I was writing this film noir. Although I was, you know, um, I was commissioned to do a film noir story for the Walrus magazine. There mm -hmm. was a writer from each city mm -hmm. who was supposed to do a film noir of their own city. So, and I was playing with it. It was kind of like, you know, across like with some Jean-Luc Godard feel and a little Alice in Wonderland thrown in. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I wasn't imagining it as an animated film, but when Claire suggested it, I thought that it was actually kind of an interesting choice for an mm -hmm. animated film because I had used so many sort of humorous, tongue-in-cheek motifs in it. And you're actually uh, narrating in this film. Um, can you tell us how that idea came about, too? Why? Yeah. Yes, I am <laughs> narrating. <laughs> um, well, I think Claire approached me very early on in the project to narrate, and I think they did the narration of my voice first and then kind of paced the movie along with it, right. which actually had a nice effect because when I watched the screening for the first time, it's all these snowflakes falling in this, you know, layered cityscape of Montreal, and all of a sudden my voice is saying, paint like Johnny came out from behind the building, and then right. this animate, you know what I mean? Right. Like it's, my voice is setting into motion all these strange little cartoonish paper pop-up doll characters. So it was actually like a kind of marvelous experience. Mm -hmm. How would you classify this type of animation? Or if there is there sort of like a classification for this type of animation you're doing? Mm -hmm. I guess we did uh, We did a very multimedia approach to it. It's all uh, classical, hand-drawn character animation. Uh, all of the elements are made by hand. We used a lot of found materials and shot some stuff under the camera. But it is a stereoscopic 3D film. So then that takes it to a whole other, uh, you know, step of the process of putting everything together uh, in a stereoscopic uh, universe. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess, yeah, I guess I would just call it kind of a, 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 a twist on a classical, classically animated film. <laughs> and, and for those who are not in the know, what does uh, stereoscopic mean? Uh, so yeah, so this is what ha happens more and more often when you go to the cinema these days. Things uh, you get the glasses and you see you see the film in, in 3D. And uh, so we had uh, we were really fortunate at the National Film Board to have a lot of people who were really uh, behind 3D filmmaking for several years. Uh, so there are so many amazing mentors and such a thriving community. And uh, so I've I've been really happy to be to be around and be part of that for the last several years. So when we got the chance to make this one, we had I had formed some uh, formed some ideas of something I hadn't seen before, but would love to make. So. How, what inspired this story? Well, actually, it came. The origins of these characters, when I was about 14 or 15, like my dad, I was raised by my dad, I didn't have a mother, so I had this sort of very masculine role model, and my dad was like obsessed with gangster films and tough guy stuff, so right. he would always like drag me along to see these like violent gangster movies, and I wanted to be a writer, so I started writing like this gangster novel mm -hmm. when I was like a little kid, and they had sort of, the main character was Johnny Cuball, who was the most handsome criminal in Montreal, and he was in love with a girl named Doll Stocking. And there was a character named Pinky who ended up giving up the entire the entire gang. Mm -hmm. And you know, of course, because I was fourteen, it was a ridiculous monstrosity of a crazy <laughs> novel. Right. And then, but sometimes, you know, like now as an adult, I kind of pull these ideas from when I was a kid, like 
ideas that I had as no for novels when I was like seven. Mm -hmm. And then, so when they asked me, would you be able to write something from the film noir genre? And I was like, oh, what about that crazy book I wrote? It was called The Romeo Hotel. Right. And I was like, what about the Romeo, <laughs> some of those guys from The Romeo Hotel? Like, let's drag them out of like retirement and their crazy little nooks in Montreal. So that was where this story came from. Mm -hmm. And how does it feel now for for this story to come into fruition and at the Toronto International Film Festival, and of course, this is part of the National Film Board. It's it's kind of amazing. Like, but I mean, there are such huge films, and it's you know, it's odd to come with a with a small film, but because it's so, um, I don't know, it's so kind of wonderful that it's almost like it reminds me a bit of like when Gulliver at the end of Gulliver Travels. They're like, how do you prove you? Have been to this marvelous place and he opens his hand and he has just this little tiny sheep running around. Right. So that's my analogy to coming to like TIFF with a tiny animated film. <laughs> it's like, yes, yes, you all have these big productions, but look what we have. <laughs> and for yourself? Uh, I, I want to like <laughs> And thank you so much for your time. Please talk to us again about your any upcoming projects. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>